For in a democracy, every citizen, regardless of his interest, hold office. Every one of us is in a position of responsibility. And in the final analysis, the kind of government we get depends on how we fill those responsibilities. We, the people, we are the boss, and we will get the kind of political leadership, be it good or bad, that we demand and deserve. John F. Kennedy. Hello, I'm Tamara Michelle, and this is Real Conversations Podcast, created in Dauphin, Manitoba, Canada. In this episode, I have the opportunity to meet party leader, the Honorable Candace Bergen of the Conservative Party of Canada. She was in attendance on August 9th in Wasagaming, Manitoba for a fundraising supper. I have the privilege of bringing you her speech from that evening while we collectively hold our breath for the leadership race of the Conservative Party of Canada and its outcome September 10th, 2022. The Honorable Candace Bergen. I like hearing Don talk. <laughs> I think that's why we're good friends, because he talks and I listen, and then ask him a question and he gives me more wisdom. And I, I really, I do enjoy you, Don, so much. Um, it's so good to be here, and, uh, and just wonderful to be with my conservative family again. And it's just so good to be here today and over the last two days with my other conservative colleagues. Dan, you and your team have done a fantastic job of putting the meetings together today, of putting this dinner together, bringing so many people together. The last time Michael and I were in this room, it was to celebrate your previous member of parliament, Bob Sopak. Bob, you're here, another a wonderful friend who can't be my dad, but you're like a big brother and a, a mentor as well. So. But you know, we really are, we're a political family and uh, I think what I've realized over the years is we're a bit of a dysfunctional family sometimes we're a little bit of a we're a blended family because we're a coalition we're made up of a lot of different groups of people that have come together with one goal but we have to keep working as a family and families are only successful when they stick together when someone in the family says I didn't get my way I'm leaving you know what happens, but then we know the, the follow from that. And so when I look at what we are as a political movement and the fact that we, I believe, are like a family, and I think about what that means and why we need to continue being that political family, it's not just for us. It's not just so we can get together and have some good dinners and, and talk and, you know, bash the liberals and that, we're all very united on that. <laughs> There's a greater good. There's a greater good. There's something bigger than all of us. And that's this beautiful country. That's Canada. And the men and the women and the children and the future that is Canada. And so today I want to talk just a little bit about what I think we can be very proud of as this conservative family. And then maybe some things that we can also work on. Because we always need to be working on things, even in your homes, your businesses, your churches, your sports organization, your marriage. You have to keep working on yourself. You have to keep working to keep that family, that foundation strong. So um, I think we have a lot to be proud of. I want to start with that. I think we have a lot to be proud of. The media will not talk about it. The media will ignore the metrics, but the numbers are very strong. We have 678,000 people who have paid money to be part of our party. That's huge. Again, outraised uh, the Liberals. We raised double the amount of money that the Liberals have raised in the last quarter, and that's totally apart from the leadership candidates. People are donating, and we're having more donors that are donating. That's a, that, again, that's a metric that's very important. And then the polls are also showing that we're doing well. And again, the media won't talk about it, but I think those are things that we can think about and know that we are uh, we are strong in terms of the metrics. But even more than that, I think as conservatives, we forget what we have built. And conservatives are builders. Now, the, the liberals in the media would like to make us go away. They want to they make us history. But we actually make history. When you think about what has been established under conservative governments, confederation happened under a conservative government. The National Railway happened under a conservative government. The Bill of Rights, that happened because of a conservative government. The National Pension Plan, 
a conservative government, and then universal UCCB, the Universal Child Care Benefit, which interestingly enough, the Liberals have adopted as if it was their own idea. These are all building ideas. These are all ideas that came from the fundamental policies that conservatives believe in. Fiscal responsibility, national unity, freedom of belief and expression, law and order. These are basic conservative principles, and out of those principles, conservatives have built this nation and brought forward so many of these good policies. But we're not just builders, we are uniters. You think about this country, and when this country is most united, it is always under a conservative government. So I want to talk for a minute, a minute about unity, for a couple of minutes, because that's always the, the big word, how do we stay united? And um, I have to tell you that when I became leader, and it all happened very quickly, I, not even overnight, it literally happened over a course of a few hours, uh, but I knew very quickly that I had to establish my priorities. I knew I had, uh, there were a lot of challenges. Caucus was very dysfunctional and not united, and there was a lot going on. And I'm, I'm a believer that caucus has to be in a solid, strong position. Caucus needs to be respected and valued and brought into decisions. So I knew my first priority was going to be caucus unity. My second priority was going to be making sure that our members were proud to be conservative again. And my third priority was going to be making sure Canadians hadn't thought we lost our ever-loving minds. Like, just don't do anything stupid was my, was my main thought. So when I came to caucus and I talked about unity, my message to caucus on unity was this. And it's my message to all of you. Unity does not mean uniformity. Unity does not mean that we agree. Unity does not mean that we have the same beliefs on every issue or that we have the same ideas as far as what a solution is to every problem. That is not unity. Unity is actually accepting diversity of thought. You know the liberals love to talk about diversity, don't they? But never diversity of thought. And as conservatives, we believe in diversity of thought. We believe in diversity of opinion. So unity didn't mean in our caucus that we all agreed on everything. In fact, it was the opposite. We encouraged disagreement. We encouraged listening to each other, sharing different ideas, coming to a solution by sharing and listening. And I believe as conservatives, that's something that we've lost. I think that we bought into the liberal game of identity politics. You all know what I mean by identity politics, right? You know how the liberals love to divide this country up based on color, ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, you name it, they will find a way to, to divide. And not in a way to build up this country, but in a way to divide and conquer. So why do we as conservatives do that in our own party? You know, we kind of have labels, don't we? You know, we got the SOCONs, and we got the Red Tories, and we've got the Easterners, and you, you know what I mean, don't you? I think we need to stop that. I really do. Even just for the fact that I don't think any of us just kind of fit into any one of those boxes. You know, we all change, we all grow, we're very different people today than maybe we were 10 years ago. Maybe in some ways we're exactly the same. But we should stop this practice of identity politics in our own party. It's too important that we are united and strong for the sake of our country. Um, again, I, I believe that there are, you know, are the main main things that we have in common: fiscal responsibility, national unity, freedom of belief and expression, law and order. You can look at any policy, whether it's a social policy, whether it's a policy on the environment, whether it's fiscal policy, and we can find ways to come together around those four principles. There's so many things that unite us. But friends, let's stop the identity politics in our own party. And I can tell you our caucus has never been stronger. Our caucus has never been more united. Our caucus has never been more focused. Now, I'm not naive. I know we're in the middle of a leadership race where we're getting towards the end of it. And I know some would say it's been so divisive. Oh, it's been so divisive. That's usually the, the media and the friends in the media, the liberal friends who want to push that message. I've been hearing that same message, you guys, since 2004. And why, why is it when liberals disagree, they're open-minded and 
collaborative and so progressive. And then when we have a leadership race and we have strong candidates who are vying for the biggest job in the country, and yeah, they have different ideas and they're gonna poke at each other. They're gonna see what each other is made of. Somehow we're so divided. I can tell you folks, our caucus is not divided. Do we agree on everything? No, just like a family, we don't agree on everything. And have we had one or two people that say, oh, I didn't get my way, so I'm leaving. Yeah, you know what, I hope they come back. I really do, I hope they come back, but it sure, it sure doesn't help. So our caucus has not done that. I've been so proud of, of our caucus. We've been strong and united. And I would say my second goal of making sure our members were proud, has also happened because we've got another 100 and, uh, 600 and, or 578,000 people that have paid to be part of the party. They're proud to be conservative. So um, I, I think that this leadership race, when this leadership race is over, we are going to be stronger than ever. Now you might say to me, well, how do you know that? How do you know that? It's those 678,000 memberships is what's telling me we're going to be stronger than ever. 678,000 memberships is not just, you know, a candidate with a great website. It's not just a candidate with great social media or a candidate who's maybe very organized. I wish I could say it was the party was really good at, you know, processing memberships. It's none of those things. 678,000 memberships is a movement, a movement of people who want to get rid of this corrupt, tired, arrogant liberal government, and they see hope in our party, in our leadership candidates. And if anybody after September 10th thinks that they're going to do wedge, divide, and stigmatize identity politics in our own party, they're going to be left behind because there is a blue wave that is happening. And the, what gives me hope is those 678,000 people who have joined our party. And I know you all want to be part of that. excited for our party and I'm excited for the future of this country. Now as Dawn talked about, there are a lot of reasons why the country needs a conservative government. Uh, I, you know, the, the, it, we were talking at the, at the table, it just never ceases to astound me how the Liberals' friends in the media, they, the media really is an extension of the, the Liberal communications way, how they cover and protect and basically manage communications for the Liberals. They are constantly apologizing for the Liberals. I, I don't know if any of you have been watching, uh, probably not because you've got other things to do, but we, we've had, we have a great, one of our great MPs, Raquel Dancho, is Raquel here? Oh, I didn't know, she, she's been at the meetings, but I think she had to go home. <laughs> amazing young member of parliament who's just doing an, an incredible job and she's been really been leading the charge on what's been happening uh, with the RCMP, the interference in the RCMP uh, investigation into the mass killings. And talking about how the liberals have, uh, you were using it for their own political gain. She was telling us how she did a press conference. Do you know what the media were, were just pushing her on? Because of course the media really have to hold the opposition to account. Well, she, they said to her, well, what's, what's the big deal? What's the big deal if the, if the Liberals are going to use some event that happened to, you know, maybe push their political agenda? You know, friends, can you imagine that in this country where we have the media asking that question and they're not outraged at what the Liberals are doing? But it's a real, it's a real thing that we have to deal with as Conservatives. And it's something that, um, for, you know, for me, it's probably the worst part of being a member of Parliament is the biased media. And uh, I think at some point, well, whoever wins the leadership race, I hope that we go, when we win government, we go hard after the media and they need to be held to account. We, um, you know, when you look back over the last uh, six, seven, eight, nine months, uh, we've had a lot going on. You know, Don, you talked about, you know, when I became leader, we had our own internal issues going on. We had the convoy, we had the Emergencies Act, and we had a war in Ukraine. You know, we've had so many things that have been happening. And uh, at the same time, holding the Liberals to account is our job. I've had people say to me, why are you always criticizing? Okay, why are you criticizing? 
criticizing the Liberals. Well, that's our job. But we've also been offering strong solutions, and I'm really excited about the things that we've been offering. We brought forward several motions to end the restrictions and mandates, uh, not because we don't believe in uh, you know, the government and had to protect Canadians at a certain point, but everybody else was lifting restrictions, and this government was just holding on to them for ideological reasons. There was no reason to continue, and still no reason to continue with some of the restrictions. We put forward three motions in the House of Commons to deal with that. But more importantly, and something I think was very positive, is we put forward a motion to take away the gas tax. Gasoline is just costing so much for everyday Canadians. And so we asked the government, would you give Canadians a break? Would you give them a break at the pumps? So, of course, they said no. They and the NDP, the NDP who say they care about the little guy. But we've been offering positive solutions, and that's because we want to show Canadians that we are a government in waiting, yeah, and, and our caucus is a government in waiting. So I'm, um, I want to tell you that uh, really to be the leader of the party has been a, the honor of my life, and I'd like to joke that I'm not the interim leader, I'm the leader in the interim. <laughs> that isn't actually true. We don't have the interim leader title, but um, when you're the leader of this party, you have to have all of the, the responsibilities. And so so it's truly been the honor of my political life. I mean, I started, as Don said, as a volunteer. Like so many of you, and I met your president and your past president. I was the president of, a, of the uh, riding in St. Boniface and did the work that so many of you do, you know, knocking on doors, working with candidates, trying to raise money, doing all of the things that we do as volunteers. And so to be the leader of this party and the leader of our caucus has really been an honor. And kind of every speech I'm giving now, I'm realizing, okay, this probably will be my last speech as leader, so I'm getting down to that. But if I can leave you with one message tonight, it is this. Be proud to be conservative. Don't ever be ashamed of our conservative values and our conservative principles. We do not have to be liberal light to win the next election. We do not have to be like liberals to win the next, the, to win the hearts and minds of Canadians. We have to be consistently conservative and we have to be authentic. We can't be something different than what we are. And so many of you have worked so hard. You, I hope we're gonna be working in the next election. Uh, I wanna thank you for the good work that you've done. I wanna thank volunteers, members of parliament, senators, People have just given so much to this party, and again, it's because you love the country. And I have no doubt that if we can stay united, and when I say united, that does not mean we agree. In fact, I would say the opposite. I think it's good when we disagree. I think it's good when we hash it out. But we align on our goals, and then we move forward together as a team. Just like that family, that family that goes through difficulties, that church that goes through difficulties, that sports organization that goes through difficulties, that business that goes through difficulties. Yeah. But you get through it and you get the job done. And it's because there's a greater good. And the greater good, my friends, is this beautiful country. And it's our children and our children's children. So when I say stay united, Stay who you are, have your different opinions, talk about them, but be consistently conservative and be proud to be conservative. I am, and I have no doubt that after September 10th, we will be just as strong, even stronger, and that this blue wave will sweep the nation, and we're gonna be able to govern again and do it for the good of our country and uh, and for the best, the best outcome. So God bless each one of you, God bless Canada. Thank you so much. Thank you for tuning in to Real Conversations podcast. If you enjoyed today's special coverage here in Manitoba, please like and subscribe on YouTube. See you next week.